Good morning. Hi. <laughs> I thought today that I would talk a little bit about uh, NaNoWriMo and about um, my plan for November and what I will be writing about. Um, I originally wasn't going to share my idea, but I think that's not really necessary. I think I'm, I can share. <laughs> um, yeah, I, I can be vulnerable about that for sure. Um, so the kernel of my idea ooh, this year is I will be writing a short, um, I'm, yeah, I'm not doing, I, we'll see if it gets to 50,000. I don't really care about that. Um, words, but we'll, um, I'm going to be writing a little booklet. Um, and it's basically inspired by still life paintings. Um, this idea that there's wisdom, there's big wisdom in small things. And the, the book itself will encourage readers to slow down and enjoy, um, enjoy the objects and the small things that are around them and hopefully find wisdom in those, um, in the small quiet moments. So I thought I would talk a little bit about how I kind of would go about planning for that. I'm typically a pantser. I'm typically somebody who just goes in and just starts writing <laughs> for NaNoWriMo. All I usually have is a little kernel of an idea. Um, I never know how it ends, uh, but this time around, since it is the first time I'm doing more of a nonfiction piece, I thought I thought I would plan a little bit more. Um, and since I have, I've come up with a structure, which I'll tell you about in a second. But I thought um, it would be really nice to, yeah, to just share my really messy process with you as how a pantser plans a book, <laughs> because it's it's not traditional, I guess. We'll see. <laughs> so what I usually do, um, since I think this comes from my, I know it comes from my roots in journaling, but I do a lot of stream of conscious writing. Um, that's pretty much all I do. Um, but I thought I'd show you how that translates into planning for a book. Um, so what I would start with typically, I'm just going to show you a page. Let's see if I can find it quickly. Um, I'd start a session. Let's say I sit down on my at my computer, at my typewriter, and I'll start a session um, knowing like, okay, I want to do some kind of nano prep, but I don't exactly know, I have my idea, but I don't exactly know where I want to go with it. So usually what I'd start off with is just like a journal entry. I start off with the date at the top, and then like I really simply just kind of follow my gut and just start to word vomit on the page and see what happens. So for example, um, I'll just read you what I have here. It says brainstorm. That's just how I start. I almost decided to read instead, but it has been too long since I've last typed. I'm admittedly afraid that I have somehow lost my book idea because I've neglected it for some time. So I'm just now just like being vulnerable on the page, opening up to my feelings and then trusting here that, um, an idea is going to come forth of what I need to, to explore. Um, and then I actually, I got it. It was really cool. So I talked a little bit about um, just that kind of, not shame, but a little bit of how I just didn't feel good for neglecting this book and worrying about losing the idea. Um, and then I come back to, okay, so I go back to the initial premise and I write out again what my purpose is. Basically, I'm going to ask them to create a still life of their own, gather their absolute favorite objects. Um, from there, we will appreciate the gift in each one or something like that. So I kind of get this, I come to this idea that how do I want to organize this book? Um, and something that I've been really inspired by lately are still life paintings. Um, as a kid, I never got them. Like when we go to the museum, I'm like, this means nothing to me. Like, why would you paint a bowl and a cup and a spoon? I don't get it. Um, but the older I've gotten, the more beauty I find in these objects. So it came to me in this free kind of free write that like, wouldn't it be cool if I had each chapter of the book be a different object in a still life painting um, or in a still life, like on the kitchen table and each object will co correlate with um, like a lesson and how journaling can help with that that makes sense. And this is cool. This is good for me to articulate out loud. Um, so for example, the object is the first one of the object is definitely one of the objects is definitely going to be a cup or a mug. What about a cup or a mug is beautiful. I think it's the idea of holding, holding things with comfort and care. Isn't that why YouTubers are always obsessed with making videos of their fancy lattes in the morning? 
isn't the world in a love affair with hot drinks in the morning? Why? Because we all want to be held, of course. So maybe I just found my idea for cup. Hold. The nature of holding the beauty in that. The beauty and warmth and the tenderness in a cup. And so I'm like, okay, that's cool. Good start. What would I'm talking to myself. What would be my essay topic? Something about tenderness, holding, the way the journal, a journal holds all your thoughts. Ooh, I like that. So I could say, then I could use then I could like develop exercises that could show how journaling can develop that sense of comfort, holding and tenderness. Um, so I basically through free write came up with a deeper, like an idea of structure, which is really cool. So from here, just from free writing, I figured out that I want to break the book up into different sections divided by different objects um, and the wisdom from those objects and then how they can correlate to somehow connecting to yourself emotionally and then in turn how can that connect um, to your journal so for example then I started I went bowl and spoon um, and so what's the wisdom in a bowl a simple bowl and a spoon and then how does that correlate to journaling and I have a couple objects as well so each so I figured out like I said through just stream of conscious writing how I wanted to structure the book and this for me is like the kind of planning that I do. It's really hard to describe because it's not like, okay, now I'm going to outline and now I'm going to come up with the beginning and the end. Like I, it, it's flowy, if that makes sense. Um, so I need a list of some objects that I thought would be cool. And then I just ended the session, right? Like I tell, talk to myself, like, thank you, sweet typewriter. This has been an incredible session. Thank you for reminding me that I should never be scared of you. I, I needed that. And then a couple days later, I come back again, almost journal entry style. And again, I'm just kind of writing, but I came up with some next steps and like really loose to do's. And then from there, now the next time I come back and I'm ready to, to do a brainstorming session or a planning session, um, then I can come back to this list. So for example, one of them was um, figure out what the hell you want to say about this project on the internet. Yeah, so I was really debating, do I want to talk to you all about this or not? Um, and so I put that on the list and then the next day when I came back, I looked at this list and I was like, you know what, one of the ones that I want to free write on or brainstorm on is, is this question. What do I want to talk about on the internet about this, about this book? And, uh, so that's what I did. And then I, again, just kind of started with the date and just don't judge myself at all and just kind of word vomit and see what comes out of that, that to do in that prompt. Um, so where I'm at right now in terms of my planning, I think I need to do more research on um, still life paintings, that's for sure. I also need to figure out, like I've got now my seven objects um, from the still life that I'm gonna be exploring in the story, not the story, in the, in the book. And I wanna figure out, just like nail down, what do I really wanna say about each object um, and how do I want that to come across in the book and then I need to come up with the journaling activities and prompts that I'm going to use for each object um, and then eventually I'm going to have to talk about the intro and the conclusion and all that kind of stuff but I'm not really there and that's overwhelming for me right now so I probably will just come up with a little bit more like flush out this idea of what I want each object to what I want to talk about for each object yeah I think that's what I really need to kind of keep doing. And I definitely need to research um, just still life paintings in general, because I still am just curious, like why an author would paint a bowl and a cup and a spoon and maybe a peach or something like that. But I find it to be really, really beautiful. So I'm just interested in that. And then, yeah, I definitely want to keep researching a little bit about how I'm going to publish it or share it with you all. But that's for a later date. I'm probably not going to do that anytime soon, actually. Um, so yeah, that's kind of where I'm at with NaNoWriMo. Um, I, I just kind of follow this rabbit trail and uh, yeah, I've got this, I'm just throwing it all in this binder pretty, just pretty messily at this point, but I actually have a lot more planning stuff than I thought I did. Um, but like I said, it's not just like, okay, I'm gonna write a traditional outline for the way I do it. I just, I just write stream of consciousness and then things come out and then and that's how it keeps going so that's kind of my overall uh, thoughts um if you like stick around i'm gonna do a little bit of writing and uh yeah
let me know if you have any questions about the project or about my process uh, down below.